Thanks for inviting us in on our Thursday night. For the second time in recent weeks, DNA technology has helped crack a cold case mystery here in Indiana. Just yesterday, we learned that genetic genealogy identified a Jane Doe from the 1990s. Then last week, investigators used DNA to confirm the identity of the I-65 killer. So tonight at 11, we want to break down the basics of how this technology works. Plus, we're going to share some of the other major cases it has helped solve. But first, our Lauren Kostick shares this huge impact that this technology has had for investigators in search of answers. In just two weeks, morning, two everybody. more cold cases in Indiana have been solved through investigative genealogy. You can now call her Margaret Ann Stigowski. On Wednesday, a 17-year-old Jane Doe was identified in Boone County after being found dead in 1992. And last week, state police identified the I-65 killer who terrorized motel clerks in the 1980s. The match was 99.99999% positive. In both cases, investigators were able to use unknown DNA from a crime scene and data from genealogy sites to narrow down a suspect or a Jane Doe. It's something police say they could never do before. Unless you had a specific subject to send a sample in with your crime scene sample, um, it most likely was not going to do you any good at that time. Doug Coons is a retired FBI agent now working as a private investigator in Carmel. He says this breakthrough in technology is allowing law enforcement to do more with less. Now you can have just a teeny little sample and it can be amplified with technology. And with so many possibilities, DNA is being collected more and more. Every time a violent offender is arrested, part of that, the booking process in addition to pictures, fingerprints, it now includes a buccal swab. But the tool is still new. Genealogists like CC Moore are still uncovering ways to use it. Can't undo what has been done. There's no happy endings here, but it does lift that weight. And as genealogy databases continue to grow, so do the possibilities, with experts being extra careful with how it's used. Because we don't want it to be misused, and we don't want to uh, disappoint the public. Let me show you how this technology works. It starts with comparing a genetic profile to other DNA in public databases. Now keep in mind, we're not talking about sites like Ancestry.com. Investigators can only pull from two sites, GED Match and Family Tree DNA. And people have to upload their data and opt in for investigators to access it. Once analysts have access to the DNA, they start constructing a family tree and they look for descendants. After that, they send a report to detectives to investigate potential leads. Collect their DNA, see if it matches that original crime scene sample, and also look for other connections to the victim or that crime. Investigators always use public records and social media when putting together a profile for police. This technology has helped solve dozens of investigations all across the country, including the case of the Golden State Killer. Genetic genealogy led police to Joseph D'Angelo in 2018 after decades of investigating a series of rapes and murders in the 70s and 80s. One of his relatives uploaded their data to GED Match, which matched DNA found at one of the crime scenes. D'Angelo's now serving life in prison on 13 murder counts. Parabon Labs is one of the leading genetic genealogy companies in the country. Since starting in 2018, they've helped identify more than 205 leads in cases across the country. You can find details on how the process works and a link to the DNA databases right now on WTHR.com. And that wraps up tonight's big story.